Once upon a time, two genetically perfect players were born in Manchester. One signed for giant club Manchester City, whilst the other signed for National League North side Curzon Ashton. Despite these two players being absolutely perfect at football, there was one key difference between them. The player at Curzon Ashton had a loyalty of one. He was going to leave that club as soon as he could. Whereas the player at Man City had a loyalty of 20. He was going to stay there until the end. And in today's video, we're going to simulate these guys' careers to see exactly what they do if they stay at Man City and how many clubs they move on to from Curzon Ashton and if they can have the same level of success throughout their career. Personally, I think we're going to see some more success with the player at Manchester City because Man City are going to build their team around him. The player with one loyalty currently at Curzon Ashton is going to move, I think, to a lot of different clubs. I think we could see him go to five, six, seven different clubs throughout his career because he's got such low loyalty. Because of that, yes, he still will get some individual amazing accolades, but I cannot see him winning as many Ballon d'Ors or other individual awards or continental competitions because he's always moving around and will never settle. Also worth pointing out, they are both centre to midfielders. I've got them playing in the centre of midfield. It just seems like a very versatile position that basically every club uses. And every single attribute is listed at 20 out of 20. We've frozen the attributes as well so they cannot change. And in terms of edit player attribute details, the hidden attributes, as I said, uh, 20 loyalty for this player, 1 loyalty for the player at Curzon Ashton. And I've also ensured things like injury proneness are set to the minimum so they won't get injured. And now here's the fun part. We're going to simulate these guys' careers and we're going to see how they end up. So we've jumped 20 years into the future and one of these players is about to retire. Let's go and check out these guys' careers. To start off with, we're here with Perfect Player 2, the guy who was at Man City, and he has stayed at Manchester City for his entire career, making 664 league appearances for them. 288 goals. That's mental from a centre of midfield. One thing you'll notice is that his bravery has dropped to 17. That's probably because of an injury. When players get injured, uh, sometimes they, if it's a bad injury, they'll lose a bit of bravery. So that's obviously what's happened in this situation. He's also made nearly 200 appearances for England, scoring 90 four goals in the process. What a career this guy has had. Uh, ratings have never gone below a 7.68. That's literally the lowest rating I've seen in the league. That's absolutely monumental. And he's only had one, two, three seasons where he's had less than 10 goals. Absolute machine. And I think it kind of proves my hypothesis that this guy is going to have a team built around him. Clearly, he's done very well in every single season. The team's been built around him. Now, as for the other player who we started off with at Curzon Ashton, I said he was going to move to five or six different clubs. Let's... Let's see if that's true. And so the other perfect player is currently at PSG. But as we can see on the right hand side of the screen right now, he went from Curzon Ashton to LA Galaxy, strangely, and then PSG and has never left after playing nearly 500 times for them, scoring 238 goals. Hasn't played quite as many games for England though, which is interesting. Uh, hasn't scored as many goals either. I'm not quite sure why he wouldn't play as many games unless of injuries, of course, have got in the way or something like that. But it seems bizarre that there's about a 20 game difference between the two players. And if anything, this player has actually played better. The lowest average rating that we've seen is a 7.8. Is that what I'm seeing as the lowest? It actually is. A 7.8 is the lowest and only one, two, uh, three, four seasons below 10 goals. But these games in the MLS, he didn't really play much at all. So I feel like we can almost ignore those a little bit. But I am very surprised that he stayed at PSG for such a long time. Has his loyalty changed at all? It shouldn't do. Uh, loyalty still won. Like, it's not changed. Obviously, PSG just come in with some massive contracts for him. He's on £400,000 a week right now. I mean, I'm sure he's on more than that in previous years as well. So obviously, he's very cushy in Paris. Okay, so we've not really... S okay, so already what we're seeing is this player's maybe performed better, actually, at PSG. PSG, which is not what I was expecting that the guy at Man City would perform better because he was at the same club the entire time, but I guess this guy's played at PSG for a long, 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 long time. Nearly 20 seasons, right? Only four, 16 seasons he's been there. It's pretty mental, to be fair. But also, we've been wrong in the fact that we thought he moved to a lot more clubs than this. Only three clubs, and actually only two, I suppose, we started off at Curzon Ashton, didn't we? But I am surprised he went to LA Galaxy of all clubs. It was on a free contract as well, and I'm going to assume that foreign clubs often contract for British clubs could because of the way the transfer and contract rules work, but I'm surprised LA Galaxy got him. Right, let's have a look at the Ballon d'Or over the past 20 seasons, and it's been absolutely dominated by our perfect players. So perfect player two is the guy who was always at Man City. Perfect player one was the guy who was at Curzon Ashton, basically just stayed at PSG afterwards. So perfect player two has won one, two, three, four, five, 
six Ballon d'Ors. Not bad going, but Perfect Player 1 has won 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Ballon d'Ors. I mean, that's a whitewash really, isn't it? That is a whitewash. It's also very interesting to see that Perfect Player 2, the guy at Man City, uh, won a lot of his Ballon d'Ors in the early stages of his career, whereas Perfect Player 1 at PSG won them later on which suggests that Man City had a bit of dominance early on in this save file. And if we look at the Premier League, you can see that Man City won virtually every single Premier League for a decade or more, actually, in the early stages of this, and actually won quite a lot after that as well. So Man City have been dominant in the Premier League. As you would expect, uh, PSG have won every single title up for grabs in France impressive. So I'm going to assume that winning the Champions League has had a really big impact on these players winning uh, the Ballon d'Or. And in the early years of this save file, Man City won one, uh, two, three, they've won four, five, they've won six Champions Leagues, but only one in the early years. They've won more of them a lot more recently. And PSG have never won the Champions League. Uh, they've come runners up one, two, three, four, five times. Dion runners up one time as well. Big props to Dion there for uh, coming runners up in the Champions League. But interestingly, they've never won it, which is surprising because usually the Champions League is seen as, you know, a big part of winning the Ballon d'Or. So what about the World Cup then? Well, England have won three of the five World Cups and can runners up once as well. So obviously these two players have come to the midfield and massively helped them win the World Cup and that's going to be a huge part of winning Ballon d'Ors. They've also done pretty well in the European Championships, winning two of the five European Championships. So, you know, doing pretty well. So if we go back to the Ballon d'Or, why is Perfect Player 1 winning a lot more than Perfect Player 2? Well, the most recent season that was won by Perfect Player 1, the average rating is a lot higher, uh, scoring more goals but not getting as many assists. And again, it seems to be more of a battle of the average rating. We're going to start scrolling through a few of these right now and it's more like the average ratings. I mean, to be fair, it was a much better season for Perfect Player 1 here. So many more goals and assists than the guy at Man City. And again, the season before that, just a much better average rating despite more goals being scored by Perfect Player 2. Assists here were way through the charts. Perfect Player 2 won it in 2036. And Perfect Player 1 wasn't anywhere to be seen in 2036. And it's not like they were injured, they were playing a lot of games that calendar year, but for whatever reason, not recognised in the Ballon d'Or whatsoever. But Perfect Player 2 had a really, really top season there with over 50 goal contributions, over 60 goal contributions actually. But then there was a six years of Perfect Player 1 winning basically everything. And again, it just looks to be more like the average ratings, despite more goal contributions this past season from Perfect Player 2. Again, actually, I. I, whoa, now this season seems bizarre. 2034, Perfect Player 1 wins it with 12 goals, 22 assists, a 7.86 average rating in 34 appearances. Now, 14 more appearances were made by Perfect Player 2 and they scored 11 more goals, got three more assists and a much better average rating. Also, poor Dean Martin scoring 41 goals in the calendar year couldn't get close. I'm going to presume Perfect Player 1 won it because they played less games and got a better percentage in terms of goal returns and better percentage returns of average ratings or something like that. It feels a little bit harsh, actually. But then carrying on looking down, you can see that Perfect Player 1 just gets better average ratings. And I guess that's going to actually be something to do with how good the leagues are. The Premier League is rated number the Premier League is rated number 1 in Europe whereas the French league is rated number 3 in Europe. As a consequence, it's likely to be that better players are playing in the Premier League. So one, obviously the player at Man City is not going to get as many goals and assists as the player in France because he's got to play against high quality opposition but he's also got higher quality teammates that are now taking some of the load away from him and contributing more to goals and assists. Whereas the player playing in France, well, I guess they're going to have a lot more clear individual performances that are noteworthy for the Ballon d'Or committee and selection. That's my take on it. And that's why I think Perfect Player 2, who actually spent a lot of his career at PSG, ended up probably being the better player overall. But I think what we've learned here today is pretty interesting. Uh, one, if PSG sign you, you're never leaving because of all the money they can give you. But also number two, it appears that the Champions League, at least in game, is not that important for winning the Ballon d'Or because PSG never won it. And actually, you might stand a better chance of winning the Ballon d'Or if you play in a league slightly off the top spot, like number three in the rankings, like PSG, where you can absolutely dominate with individual performances. 
it. This is something we could put to the test in the future. But another thing that I want to do is give like the perfect back line to San Marino or something like that. That is something we should do in the next few weeks or so. So if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure you drop a like on the video for me and subscribe if you are new around here. And of course, watch one of these other videos on the screen right now that I have brought out recently. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.